right. Well, uh, back to the intro real quick. All right. So this is uh, FPV, Journey, FPV, a lot of good stuff like that. Um, this is probably going to be the most boring part of FPV. The most exciting part was me fumbling around with my microphone. And the reason why is because if you're completely new to FPV, the simulator time is not going to be particularly fun. If, in fact, you should be using it as kind of a boot camp, a training camp. It's just there to make sure that you don't go out and crash your drone a thousand times and break it in real life. It's a lot cheaper to do that in the computer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get you set up with your controller. So when you get your controller, hopefully it's going to be something similar to mine. Like this is a Jumper T14. There's so many different controllers, so it's hard to actually give you guys a full guide on, on these controllers because it's like trying to give a full guide on, uh, I don't know, phones or something, right? Like each phone is going to be slightly different, even though they, they kind of all run Android. So this is your throttle right here. And you notice how it doesn't spring. There's no spring to that because you want to be able to set your throttle and not have to have it, you know, be fighting you. Your throttle should be a very, it's the most fine controlled thing that you have. This is your yaw. And the best way here, we'll take this, this drone right here. This is your yaw. So yaw is going to turn the drone like it's spinning uh, on your finger, right? So it's left and right. Over on the other side is going to be your roll. And just like Star Fox, do a barrel roll. So it's going to tilt you like that. And then the pitch. Up and down is the pitch. And that's just looking up and down. Now there is something a little interesting that I like to tell people because you need to be aware of this. With FPV drones, you set your camera before you fly. It's not like DJI Mavic or even the Avada. Like, there are some FPV drones that you can, the DJI drones. But for all DIY FPV, you set your camera and, that, and that's it, okay? Now, that does have a pretty big impact on how you fly. And if you think about it, the way to achieve forward flight with the drone is to tilt down so that you start going forward. The thrust that was only going up now is being also thrusted forward. The thing is though, all right, now notice this. When you're directly, you're just hovering, you're not moving forward, you're not moving backwards, and you yaw, it's gonna spin like that, okay? And when you roll, I'll try to put it straight on with you, it's gonna roll like that, okay? The problem is, is that when you are going fast, let's say you wanna race, you're gonna set your camera to like 45 degree angle, so you're gonna start out like this, right? And so you're gonna be flying around pretty fast. When you yaw now, you're gonna be doing basically a roll. When you roll, you're gonna be doing a yaw, at least from your perspective in the camera. So the higher up your camera angle goes, the more yaw and roll start to kind of mix. In fact, once you get to be directly 90 degrees, which you wouldn't be saying up in the air if you did that, but if you were flying directly 90 degrees, roll and yaw would exactly flip. Yaw would now roll and roll would now yaw. So the reason why that's important is because the most difficult part of flying is the fact that turning requires both yaw and roll. So you need to have kind of, you know, good hand-eye coordination and be able to, um, you know, it's like pat your head and rub your tummy kind of thing. Like you need to be able to kind of have individual control, but they need to work together. And that's the, t that's the thing that takes the longest time. But let's start back from the beginning. Let's do it just as was intended. I suggest you get Uncrashed because I really like this for learning. I think I, I've taught a lot of people, by the way, FPV, like uh, IRL, and this is how I always do it. So you're gonna go to Sunny Day because you know, we don't wanna go all glum and stuff. You're gonna go to Free Flight, and uh, don't do the race. Do Free Flight in City Park. Okay, let me just uh, make sure everyone's, now I'll, I'm gonna upload this to my YouTube, so don't worry um, because I cannot alt tab out. Good. Also, just give me a, give me a thumbs up if you can. Yeah, there's a little delay between us, so. But okay, still good. All right, all right. Good, good, good. I can ease my fears. All right, here we go. So, we're going to start out. You can see that I'm kind of moving a little bit. I think that's just the simulator. Oh, you know, and, and it would be really great. This is, the, I think, the most advanced part about FPV is plugging your controller in. That's really where the pros, you know, can differentiate themselves. <laughs> okay, here we go. So you're gonna plug your controller in, and uh, it's gonna ask you if you wanted a joystick, storage, or serial. For this purpose, obviously, you just want joystick. You select joystick, there you go, and you'll hear a little USB, 
and then you'll be able to connect. That's it's pretty simple, but I did just want to show you that's how it works. Okay, so now you have your controls, but your controls may not be right. They may be all backwards or stuff. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go press escape with the keyboard that is totally working. This is absolutely fantastic. Because I restarted my computer and uh, Bluetooth was made by, I don't know, masochists or something. All right, so you're gonna press escape. You're gonna go to controls and you're gonna see this here. And this is pretty standard. This is just showing your, your controls. The best way to do this, okay, is set your throttle all the way down and then leave this one leveled. Go to throttle, click auto, and just pump your throttle a little bit. There you go. Go to roll and then just kind of move your roll a little bit. Go to pitch, move your pitch a little bit. Go to yaw, move your yaw a little bit. There we go. And now you can also calibrate, stick calibration, and that means just move your sticks in it, all of their... Uh, extremes all right and then center the sticks which means you do need to center the, the throttle for this so you center that throttle and you click okay and now you should have look at that it should look really nice and that does look really nice make sure you select which mode you're on you guys are going to select mode two mode five, i didn't even know mode four existed i don't think it does i think it's a myth but okay uh resume and we can press r r to reset but you notice how it's flying up in the air why is that well because your throttle actually has to be all the way down Right, your throttle needs to be all the way down in order to not be you know, giving it gas. This is the tough part, is in real life, you're gonna wanna like have an arming sequence, but for this, don't bother with that just yet. You'll have to just train yourself that later. Okay, here we go. The first thing you wanna do is you want to just start hovering. So, so just one hand, don't even use your other hand, just kind of hover and see, see what it feels like. Now, and it's gonna be tough to find that hover point. And what you're gonna notice is that there's momentum. So when I shoot up in the air and I stop, I'm still kind of going up. So I'm gonna here, watch this. Let me just actually RR, just to reset. Uh, so I'm gonna shoot up in the air and I'm gonna throw my throttle all the way down. I'm still going up. And that's what throws people off the most is that there's a lot of delay in your stick movements. Not to mention too, in real life, there's gonna be even more delay because there's a delay between what you see and what's being transmitted. So there's like a Wi-Fi delay. So that just take note of that. Now, what you wanna learn is kind of how to trust your drone, which is why I say simulators are pretty much useless for real flying because you really need to learn how your drone feels in its, uh, its momentum and things like that. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to control the throttle so much. You know, I see a lot of kids, especially, they will go up and then they'll kind of be like, oh, I'm going too high. And then they'll cut down. Oh, I'm going too low. Oh, I'm going, oh, and then they'll just bounce up and down. What you want to do is you kind of want to trust your stick movements that they're going to do the thing. All you want to do for this first step is just learn how to hover. Now, I, I'm kind of slightly going forward, which is really annoying. Uh, I wish liftoff would have a mode to help teach people that were like, it just would hover in the air. Uh, but just don't worry about that. Just kind of try to hover and find that hover point and then just try to, you know, just hover around. In fact, maybe it's good that you're going forward because you're having to control your, your hover point ever so slightly differently. You never really let go of your throttle. You're always kind of giving it tiny little, little, little uh, inputs. And also, the faster you're flying forward, the more throttle you need to stay up in the air. Your throttle point will change like every millisecond as wind hits you, as you hit a turn, the different momentums are coming on your quad. The hover point is very fine and it's almost impossible to find the hover point and then just stay there. DJI accomplishes that with like a LiDAR and with GPS and stuff. It's not something that you can just like, oh, I find my hover point, now I'm just gonna stay there. It's like impossible. One little gust of wind will change it and then your momentum will change, you know? And so you're always just slightly adjusting your throttle ever so slightly. And in fact, the better you get, the more you can control that throttle and, and make it look as if it's just flying without any difference in throttle at all. That's the secret to indoor flying. But okay, so that's the first thing you wanna do is just learn how to hover. Just find your hover point and then go up in the air a little bit and then stop and then try to like ease your way down. Don't be hasty. This is definitely the end territory. Ease your way down, slowly parachute down and you'll be controlling it. You know, don't worry if you're gonna hit a tree because you know, that's uh, this is a simulator, right? So ease and slow. See how see how slow you can basically descend to the earth, and that's going to be really important because that's going to teach you how to land. If you don't know how to slowly descend, which is a little bit more difficult than you think, um, then you'll be landing hard. Like the slower and softer you can land, the better you're going to be able to land that drone. 
So that's just practice that a bunch. Now, obviously we're not gonna do that forever here, but I would say you just do that for like 10 minutes or something, take a break and do that. Don't try to get too fancy with it unless you really know what you're doing, and then why are you in the simulator? <laughs> okay, so practice your hover point and then practice kind of coming down and landing and just kind of practice maybe even just doing little crazy little inputs, you know, like zip up in the air and then kind of can try, try to like regain your hover point, like zip up and then let yourself fall and then try to regain that hover point as fast and as good as you can. And that's gonna really teach you how to understand how this, this quad is going up and down. Okay, so once I would teach a student that for a while, and once they are able to get that down, they're pretty happy because it's kind of boring for me. But you know, when you're first learning, this can be a little bit of an accomplishment. Like, hey, I'm actually hovering. It's, it's a lot harder than it seems. Okay, then we're on to the second point, and that's where things get hard because that's where you have to have your other hand. You're gonna find that hover point again. And as soon as you found that hover point, you're gonna then try to start correcting yourself and now we're not trying to go forward we're not trying to go backwards we're just trying to like balance like you're balancing something on your finger you just want to balance your drone and not really move so you just want to try to stay and i, I actually often ask uh, the students to stay inside this little circle here so try to stay inside this little circle and it's hard because you're like looking down that's where this really trains you to use your 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 mental vision you know your, your peripheral but also like you're mentally mapping where you are and that's very important for landing it's also very important for situational awareness of like people and stuff like that so you just want to try to stay in here as best as possible and just hover and honestly the, the more you can kind of just stay in the middle the better but that it's a lot harder said than done like landing on this right here is no easy feat even for an expert because you know one little slight change in your um in your movements and you're really starting to float in different areas and if you try to make too big of movements oh you're way off the you know you're way off the limit so it's very fine movements you have to make. But yeah, just try to hover inside this little thing here. And that, there's no way around it. That's just gonna take a lot of time. Now, once you can kind of stay in here, you're learning how to balance the drone and use your mental mapping, your situational awareness. Then I would say it's time to start pushing down on the pitch and going forward. Don't try to do any crazy moves. You're just trying to fly forward and keep your horizon level. Now you keep your horizon level mostly because we're flying slow with your roll. So that's gonna be your right hand, right? So your roll is gonna be keeping your horizon level. And so that's what you wanna do. You just wanna keep your horizon level. Now you see I'm using yaw to turn. Um, and I, I feel like at some point in time, you have to stop running a, a worksheet kind of thing, like running a course and just, just try it out yourself. Once you can kind of balance yourself inside that little circle, it's time for you to start just getting out there and having fun with it. This is definitely the more fun part of it. But try not to do crazy stuff. My kids are always like that. They want to do crazy stuff because they see, they see me doing crazy stuff. But no, just practice flying smooth and steady forward. Don't try to do anything crazy. Just try to be as smooth as possible. This is a good foundation for you to learn. I often watch people fly and they're doing a lot of this, you know? They're like micro adjusting. And sorry for if I'm making you sick there because it absolutely makes you sick. Um, because they learn, most people learn from like racing and they put on the gates and they want to go through the gate, but you're, you see how I'm using a lot of roll to correct myself because roll is the fastest way to turn. If you think about like with a plane, yeah, that's how you would turn, but that's actually not how you want to be turning, especially if you're trying to film for like social media. Mostly you want to be turning with a yaw movement where you're actually keeping the horizon level, but that's tricky. It's very tricky to keep the, it's like almost impossible to keep the horizon perfectly level. And the final thing we can do after we start learning how to fly around a little bit is then just float up and try to do a 360 without the horizon getting askew at all. Cause you're having to use both roll and yaw to accomplish that in, in different uh, quantities. But yeah, then you just honestly practice, just fly around, have a good time. You see how I turned so late on that. So I had to use more roll. The later you are in the turn, the more you kind of have to correct yourself and be like, whoa, 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 and that's okay. But like at the end of the day, it doesn't look very good. So I'd probably want to go back if this was for a job or something and do that line again. But yeah, yeah, just have some fun with it. You know, get do some crazy stuff, set some goals for yourself, do a little flippy flop. Sorry about that. And have a good time. And really, the guys, that's it. That's that is a simulator practice that you would have to accomplish. And then once you get it to where you're confident enough at having fun, you're going to do the last thing. And then this is, this is where we're gonna kind of end it and go to the hangout, is then you're gonna come back to this little spot right here and you are gonna land exactly where you took off from. Now that's really important just for the symbolism almost because you want to practice going back to the beginning and because that's where you're standing, right? This is where you took off from and try to land right here where you took off from and take it real slow 
balance, find your hover point. Don't try to initiate the landing sequence until you found your hover point. And then just slowly drop it down. Now, you you don't just drop the throttle. Like, you don't just slowly drop the... You're almost always kind of going... Ooh, you're doing that kind of thing because you do not want to land like this. Bam! You know I mean? Like, you're probably fine. I've seen a lot of people do it, but I just... I don't like it. I want to treat my drones nice. You know, they're expensive. I put, put a lot of effort into them. So just practice and land. Oh, hello there. It's at this point that many of you might be asking yourselves, did I just join a cult? It's a perfectly valid question. Just make sure to like and subscribe. I repeat, like and subscribe. Also click up here or over there. Just click somewhere on the screen. It doesn't actually matter where you click. That's the secret.